Let's pray before we get started. God, we're coming to you, Lord, and it's a unique situation. It's a situation that, that we're not excited about, but God, we're excited that we can still open up your word. We can still uh, uh, hear and learn and know from you. So God, I just pray that you just uh, watch over us and God, just protect this church and this body of believers. God, be with the word as we open it up and everything that we do here tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. It's something that's going to be a little bit different tonight, and, uh, and I, I've got people that I've called in, and the people that I've called in is people that means a lot to you, and, and I called all them, and I asked them uh, a question pertaining to our Wednesday night services, so listen to what it is. It was, what is urgency? And here's some of this. This is some of the, the cream of the crop right here that I've got uh, that's, that's going to come to you and they're going to they're just let you know how much they miss you. They're going to pray with you, but I just want to share with you some of their thoughts. Urgency means something that's important. Needed right away. It is a top priority. Top priority, that's something that's very urgent. It's top priority. Quick. The first thing you do, something that's pressing. The gospel is life-changing importance and it needs to happen now. That's a pretty good one, isn't it? That's coming from your teachers. It says stop what you're doing and get on it. Webster's even says that it's a force or an impulse that impels or constrains. See, I want to I share something with you because a lot of people right now are, are, are feeling a sense of urgency. And when we as pastors, you know, and teachers, what we're doing is we're feeling a sense of urgency right now. Saturday, uh, my wife, she fell, as you know, and whenever she did, she broke her kneecap, and whenever she did, her, her foot was kind of bent like that, and she couldn't straighten it up, a lot of pain. First thing she told me to do, because I was there, and I'm one of these fix-it people. If you are one of them, you know what I'm talking about. But she looked at me, don't touch me is what she said because I wanted to pick her up, take her, to the, take her to the emergency room and everything. She said, don't touch me, call, call 911. So that's what I did. Well, while we was there, we, I was looking and I seen that there was nothing I could do. But I was in a sense of urgency. I wanted them to hurry up, pick up my wife, take her to the emergency room. So, so the only thing I could do, the sun was shining and it was so bad and I could tell she was getting hot and she was getting sick because of the pain. So you know what I did? I stood and hovered over her and I blocked the sun completely off of her. Y'all might think that that's completely crazy, but it wasn't crazy to me because the person I loved was on the ground and they was in pain and the only thing I could do is just pray, y'all hurry up, get here, give me something, I need help. But the only thing I can do is just block the sun and cool her down a little bit. Y'all, I want you to know in the Bible, in Matthew 4, 17, Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He was saying, I want you to know the kingdom of God is here right now. You need to get busy paying attention to what you're doing and you need to make sure that you're ready for the kingdom of heaven whenever time comes. Because one of these days, Jesus is going to come back all these teachers that I've got, and I'm going to let the teachers come up, and we are, we're social distancing, and we're, we're in here doing what we're supposed to do, but I just wanted you to see them because they love you, you love them, and I wanted to ask them to come. John the Baptist, he, he felt a sense of urgency just like we do now. In Mark 1, listen to what the Bible says in Mark 1.1. 1, 1. It says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send a messenger before thy face, which shall be prepared. And he said, Prepare the way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Listen to what he was crying. He was saying, I want to prepare the way of the Lord. You know what we're doing right now? All of these teachers that's in here, what I'm doing right now is I'm preparing the way for the Lord to come back again. And I'm trying to prepare people's heart. So what I'm doing is I'm preaching the word and I'm saying, look, you better be prepared when Jesus comes back. So what all of us are doing is we're preparing for the Jesus' return. And it says this, and it says, make his path straight. There's people who need to realize it's time to make your path straight. The Bible says broad is the way that leads to destruction. There's a way that leads to righteousness. 
And listen to what the Bible says. John did baptize in the wilderness and he preached the baptism of repentance and the remission of sin. He was preaching, look, that you've got to ask for forgiveness of your sin. And whenever he was there, he was preaching. And y'all, I think about this with, with John and the one thing I realize about John, if he, was, if he was here today, John was a rock star preacher. He was the one that, boy, people looked at and they thought, look at that, there's John. There was even some that questioned and asked him, said, are you the Messiah? They, was, they, they were really following him and they was listening to him and they was listening to every word he said. But every time, every time John preached, he was pointing them to Jesus. And whenever I sit there and I think about this, listen to what the Bible says in verse 17. It says that he preached saying, there's one that comes that is mightier than me, whose shoe laces is that I'm, I'm not even worthy to stoop down and unleash. But he tells about what Jesus is going to do whenever he comes. He said, I indeed baptize with water, but he shall baptize with the Holy Ghost. Y'all, I like that whenever he said that because whenever John came, John, he was baptizing. And then Matthew, Matthew chapter 3, I want y'all to look in verse 13 at Jesus' baptism. The Bible says that, that Jesus was coming uh, to John the Baptist to be baptized. And listen to this. In verse 13 of Matthew 3, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John and to be baptized. But John forbade him. He said, he told him, he said, no. He said, Jesus, he said, I, I, I don't need to be baptizing you. And listen to this. He said, but I have need to be baptized of you, Jesus. But you come to me. There's a humbleness right there. John was saying, look, look, I, I'm not supposed to come to you. Jesus, you're not supposed to come to me. I need to come to you. He was humbled himself. But the Bible says that he was, he was preaching a word with boldness. But Jesus told him and he answered to him. He said, allow me, allow this to be because it's supposed to be. It is fitting for us to do this that all righteousness would be coming into effect. But listen to this. And he allowed him to do it. And the Bible says that whenever Jesus was baptized, that he straightway as he came up out of the water. The Bible says, the lo, the heavens were opened up. And it says, and it was opened up to him and the Spirit of God descended on him like a dove and lighted upon him. And the voice said from heaven, this is my beloved Son in who I'm well pleased. Whenever I look at this, God showed his pleasure about who Jesus was on different occasions in the Bible. And y'all, whenever I look and I think about that, he did it also whenever I see how the pleasure of how God stood up and said, this is my son and I'm well pleased, it's time for us to stand up. It's time for us to stand up and say, this is my Jesus and I am well pleased in him and I follow him and I serve him and I honor him. And the Bible says it's a transfiguration in Matthew 17. I want you to look at this. Matthew 17 and verse 5 and 6. The Bible says, while he yet spoke, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, the voice of a cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And he said, Hear ye him. Verse 6 says, When his disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and they were so afraid. You know, if we were to have a, an event like that that happened to us today, it would kind of scare us to death, wouldn't it? But the one thing that we've got to realize is that God, He knows everything. He knew what those disciples needed in. He knows what we need now. He knows everything that we're going through. But I want you to know, He was showing His pleasure in His Son. When Jesus was speaking about His death in John, I want y'all to look in the Bible in John. And I know I'm going through this fast, but I'm doing it for a reason. In John chapter 12, verse 28, listen to what he says. Jesus had just got through teaching his disciples about, about him going to go and, and die. And he was going to go to heaven, but he was going to return again. And he, he was telling them, and listen to what he said in verse 28. He said, Father, glorify thy name. And then there came a, a voice from heaven saying, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. And the people therefore stood by and they heard it and they said it was, there's that thunder. And others uh, said it was an angel that spoke to him. 
See, I want y'all to know that it's time right now for, for us to respect and to fear the Lord. We've got to make sure that we realize why we're going through this circumstance that we are, that we respect the Lord, that we pray to the Lord, we call out to Him. Before I, before I share this with you and before I let your, your teachers come up, I want y'all to know that, that I, I was very ashamed of myself this week. Whenever, I, whenever they, I took my wife, I told you that she fell. Whenever I took her into the emergency room, they wouldn't let me come in there. So I knew I had to go home and, and make, her a, make her a bag because I knew they was going to keep her. And I went home, and whenever I did, I, boy, I was praying on the way. You know, Lord, I, I, I took, took myself home, and I got her a few shirts, and I was in there ironing them. Yes, me and I iron. So I was in there, and I was ironing her shirt. And while I was ironing her shirt, I was praying, Lord, I just pray that this is, this is not like it looked like it was. And I, I'd get her shorts, and I'd get her stuff. I got her toothpaste. I got everything ready for her, and I was making up the bag. And whenever I got done doing all this, I walked in there, and, and Tyler and Alyssa, my son and my daughter, I was about to leave to go back to the hospital. And, and I told the kids, I said, y'all, if y'all don't mind, I said, I, I need to pray. So I, I was stood there with my kids, and I started praying. And I prayed different than I normally pray. Normally, whenever I pray, it's, oh, Lord, if you just, you just take care of Carrie, just, no, 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 no. My prayer was different. This was the other half of me, and my prayer was completely different. I prayed, I said, and my prayer was right to the point, God, this is what I want. God, I want this. And so I said, God, I, I want to pray that you just... God, let that, let that doctor have the wisdom to handle her. Let that doctor just be able to sedate her and, and pop, that, pop that leg back in place. And God, just make it to where I can bring her home, to where she ain't got to stay till Monday, Tuesday, or in this case, Wednesday. I want to bring her home and I want to take care of her. God, I just pray that you do that. God, I need it. And I poured out my heart to God. And my children were standing there with me. They cried out to God. When we said amen, a minute and a half had not went by. I got a phone call. Nurse, Miss Dana said, Brother Steve, I, I want you to know you can come get your wife. I said, uh, what, what's going on? What's going on? They said, doctor sedated her. And the doctor put her leg back in place and you can come get her and we'll set her up for surgery later and you can come get her. And I couldn't even talk to her. I was crying so much. And I said, I got to tell you what I just prayed about. And I told her the exact story that I told you. But listen, let me tell you where I got so disappointed in myself. On the way to Corinth from my house by myself, I realized that I was shocked by what had happened. I wasn't shocked by, by that God's able to do it. I was shocked that God did it exactly the way I asked him to do it. He did not take nothing away. He did it exactly the way I asked him to do it to the T. And I was saying, God, I, I, can't, believe, I can't believe this. I can't believe you did that. Why did I not believe that my God can do this because I want you to know I'm teaching you every time, week in and week out, that I believe, but yet my faith was so weak at that time, but my God was so strong. So I want you to know something. No matter how weak your faith seems to be right now, you remember your God is the strongest God. If you've got the God that I know, he is the strongest God. There's no other God, no one that we should worship. We should fear him. We should reverence him. We should love him. We should just tell everybody we see. They should see our eyes squint whenever we're smiling, whenever we've got our mask on, when we're around. People need to know we have the love of Jesus in our heart. It's time for people to respect the Lord. It's time for people to fear the Lord. It's time for people to turn to our God. Psalms 33, 8 says, Let all the earth, let all the earth fear the Lord. 
Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand at awe at him. I stand at all. I stand amazed at the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. Who stay, he loved me. He loved me unconditionally. He's still loving me today. And he shows me all the time. Stay faithful to me, my son. Stay faithful to me. Right now, you want to open everything up. Y'all, I want you to know, I want this place opened up and filled back up like it was. But the Lord has not given me peace about it. Until he does, I want you to know, we're going to continue to preach the word of God. I'm going to let you see the people that you love, the people that invest their self, that teaches the word of God to you all the time. So I want y'all to know something tonight. We're standing for Christ. We're standing for Christ. Mr. Rady, if you'd come, if you'd come right here, he's going to speak a word, and I want him to pray over his class. So if y'all don't mind, right there is your microphone. I just want to say to my class that I'm honored. Uh, Hold it up to your mouth. Hold it up to your mouth, please. Thank you that I'm honored to be your teacher and uh, I love each of you and as we have this special time tonight we know that the Lord has uh, been with our pastor and he has allowed us to come and uh, I can visualize each of you as, uh, as I see you from Sunday to Sunday. I haven't been there for uh, several times because of sickness and then because of uh, the throes that we're in with the coronavirus. I pray for each of you often by name and uh, look forward to the time that we can be back together again. Thank you very much. I wish to say also that I'm honored to be able to stand here and hold my Bible and know just as Jesus was talking to Nicodemus in the book of John he said, the wind blows where it listeth, there hears the sound thereof, but canst not tell from whence it come or whither it goes. Such is the spirit of man. So we're here tonight because the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, in, is, is in each of us who are believers. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit has moved our pastor to bring us together. We owe him a, a thanks, and we, not only him personally, but for God leading him in this direction. Thank you. Amen. Robert. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to say that some of us wasn't prepared for this. Some of us are in work clothes with work hair. <laughs> but uh, I am honored to be here tonight. Uh, thankful that Brother Steve invited us in. Uh, I just wanted to say to my class, uh, I love each and every one of you. I miss seeing each and every one of you on Sundays and, and uh, the fellowship and, and, and everything that we share. Um, honored to be your teacher. Thankful to be your teacher. Uh, just wanted to come tonight and uh, and let you know that let you know that what brother Steve is doing here I believe is is ordained by God mm -hmm. uh, I believe he's doing just exactly what God would have him to do and I believe um, wholeheartedly that as soon as God tells him to open the doors he'll open the doors amen until then I ask you all to be faithful I ask you all to uh, uh, just just hang in there just hang in there. Everything's going to be good. Everything's going to be good. Um, just got just a couple of minutes here, so let's just, uh, ju I just want to say a quick prayer for my class. Uh, thankful for all you guys and want you to know that. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just ask that, Father, that right now you'd extend your hand of protection, that you'd extend, Lord, your, your blessings on each and every one in our class, on each and every one in this church. Father, I just ask that you continue to lead Brother Steve in the way that, that he should go. I pray that you you just bless Brother Steve and that you continue to be with him. Uh, 
Lord, lead him as he leads us. Mm -hmm. Give him the ability to lead us. And, Father, show him just exactly the right time to open these doors. Um, as a class, I, I look forward to seeing you again. As individuals, I look forward to seeing you again. Um, just very quickly, uh, a quick prayer for, for Miss Carrie. Uh, I know that she's going through a hard time right now, about to have her surgery. Lord, I just pray that you, uh, Father, that you'd watch over her and that you'd touch her, Lord, in a mighty way. Father, I just pray that you'd watch over each and every one of us and bring us back, Lord, as soon as you know that it's time. Yeah. Father, I just pray for all these things, and I pray for, Father, forgiveness for all of our sins. And Father, we give you the praise for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I just want to tell you that uh, it feels so good to be in God's house tonight. And I can't wait to see this place filled up. And we know that uh, the Lord's got something special for us. And I just want to tell my Sunday school class that I love y'all and I miss you so much. And I'm honored to, and it's a privilege to teach God's Word. Yeah. And I learned so much. And if you think that uh, you can't do something for God... You better think again because if you're willing, he'll work through you. You just got to be willing. And I can't wait for us to get assembled again. And I just miss everybody. And I just want to say a prayer for my class. Lord, I, I just come to you right now, Lord, to lift everybody up, Lord. God, we miss them. We miss seeing them week in and week out, though, Lord. And Lord, but we got to remember that we're the church outside these doors, Lord. We are to take the word to others, Lord, wherever we go, God. God, I know that, Lord, through all this, Lord, what a testimony we'll have. And, God, I know that we're going to be stronger because of this. Lord, we just thank you for Brother Steve. We thank you that we're here tonight. Lord, we love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey ladies, I miss you girls so much. I'm so thankful that we've got this opportunity to come to church tonight and actually get to share a little bit of our love for you. It's such a privilege to be able to speak to some of the ladies tonight that are in my class actually. You're actually here and I'm, here. I'm so happy to see you. It just makes my heart just so full. Um, we're studying about the Proverbs 31 woman, how to become that woman. And I believe that God had a very special thing in mind when this coronavirus came along in spite of what everybody else is saying because it gives us the opportunity to practice being that, 30, that Proverbs 31 woman by staying at home with our families and by cooking, lots of cooking, right? Amen. Um, lots of housework and lots of doing stuff with our kids and families. And um, I'm just grateful for this time. It's been very hard, but I'm grateful but it's a blessing to be here tonight and to be able to see some of our family. And I'm with Robert. I'm ready for this place to be full. And with Chris, I'm ready for this place to be full. I'm ready for us to be back in, in God's time, in Brother Steve's time when he sees fit. And I want to say a little blessing for you guys tonight, a little prayer, and let you ladies know how much I love you and how much I miss you tonight. Dear Lord God, I just come to you, and I just thank you so much for what you're doing in all of our lives right now, Lord. I just ask you just to continue to bless us and keep us safe so that we can come back to your place and worship again just very, very soon, Lord. Be with each lady in my class, Lord. Bless them. Help them to be the woman that you want them to be. Help us all, God, when we fall, just to get back up and try again because it's all in your precious name that we ask this. Amen. I just want to say how much I miss teaching, period. Even though we get to teach our class on Sunday night, staring into a cell phone, and I know a lot of you are faithful being on that class, but I still miss seeing you 
in person, I still miss hearing your laughter and hearing your concerns. But I want you to know something. God is still in control. He hasn't lost control. And I want you to know that there are souls out here that still need to be saved. And as a class, if I could say one thing to you, I want you to keep your eyes on the cross. Because if you keep your eyes on the cross, everything else will line up. And I miss you guys, and I miss you guys so much, and, and I want you to pray. Pray for a revival in our land. Pray for a revival in our community. God's fixing to send a great revival. I really feel that in my heart. And I want to be part of it. But more importantly, I want to be part of that going home ceremony. I want to be, I want to be part of going home, and I want everybody to pray. This is the time to pray for your family. And don't forget to spread the gospel wherever you go. Dear God, I just come to you. I thank you, God. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. And I thank you, dear God, that you thought enough of me to die on the cross for my sins. Dear God, it's nothing that I can do in myself, dear Father. I had to lay it down at your feet and let you do it all. Dear God, I'm nothing without you. But with you, I'm everything. Dear God, I just pray for my class. I pray, dear God, that you just cover their homes. Cover their homes with love, dear God. I pray, dear God, that you just be with their families, dear God, that they just feel their love that they should have. Dear Father, I just pray for this church. I pray for a pastor. Dear God, I just pray that you put a hedge of protection around this church, dear God, that sickness doesn't come in here. Dear Father, it's not welcome here. Satan's not welcome here, dear God, but you are. Dear Father, I just pray for our pastor as he makes these decisions. Pray for Miss Carey. Pray for my dear wife tomorrow. She has this uh, biopsy, dear Father, and we're going to go ahead and give you the praise and the honor and the glory for both of those. And I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. First off, I just want to say uh, I love y'all and I miss y'all in my young adult class. Uh, and there's any advice you know I could give you from from what I'm experiencing during all this is that that light is always there. He he he's still there. He's not going anywhere. Uh, he's still looking out for us. As Brother Steve talked about, you know, uh, sometimes we don't believe the things he does, but he still answers prayers every day. Uh, I just want to ask y'all to stay faithful, keep studying, uh, keep looking for God in every situation. Uh, I've had time through this to step back myself and see God working in this, and it's amazing, and I pray that everyone would be able to do that. Uh, like I said, I love y'all, and I just want to say a, a quick prayer for y'all. Uh, Lord, I thank you for this night, Lord, and I thank you for each blessing you give us, Lord. And Sometimes, Lord, we know those blessings are wrapped in uh, pain and, and, and things that, that may not be nice or, or fun, God, but God, if we look through your eyes, we can see all the good in every situation, Lord. Lord, I thank you for my class. I thank you for each one in my class, Lord. Um, I pray that you uh, lift them up through this time, Lord. Help them to focus on the good, Lord. And, Lord, I can't wait till you bring us all back together, Lord, so we can study more of your word together, Lord. Lord, keep growing us. Keep bringing us all closer together. We love you and we praise you. I want to thank you most of all for sending your son to die for our sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The thing I want you all to realize is that not a one of these knew what was coming whenever they got here. All they knew is that I asked them to come. And the Bible tells us plainly, it says be instant. That means for us to be ready. In season and out of season, the Bible tells us make sure we are always ready to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. These teachers that y'all have got, they love you and they're ready. They're ready whenever these doors open up. They're ready. Matter of fact, there's a lot of them that are in, uh, that works in, in nursing homes and they work in the medical field. And I, I want you to know they understand what's going on. And this is a, this is a time that, that they're ministering to people, not only through the Word of God, but they're ministering to people's health. So I want y'all to, to love on them and, and let them know how much you appreciate them because this is hard for all of us. 
and I know it is. Y'all, I want to have a word of prayer with you, and I want you to know how much I love you. I appreciate how, what you mean to me and my family. It's amazing. And for the ones who are, are, are watching this, and they're going to watch this for the next couple of weeks, and they pull this up and they say, who are, who are those people that's standing up there that, that's loving these, these classes and teaching these classes? It's your brothers. It's your sisters. They love you. And they want you to know what they know. And that's Jesus. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I come to you and it, it's important that people realize that every one of us are in this together and God, we're, we're uh, worshiping and honoring you in our own way and God, I just pray that you rule and reign in, in this church and in our hearts and God, everything that we do. Lord, I thank you for faithful people. I thank you for people loving you the way they're supposed to love you. God, thank you for Jesus. It's in his name I pray, amen. I love y'all.